Hey, what's up you guys? Craft Farms here. Welcome back to another video. How's everybody doing today? Um, apparently I gotta load my course back up. Um, so we are here back on Tahitian County today. And today we are going to finish up seeding our oats that uh, I started off camera. And uh, <clears throat> see how much further we can get. So, quick update. I did swap out our Mac grain trucks for uh, JC's. Uh, international S1800s. They just kind of fit a little bit better with our setup that we got going here. So I figured I would add those in <clears throat> and uh, so we, I believe that we did actually kind of come out a little bit ahead. We did. Uh, last episode we only had 80 some, I believe like 83,000, now we're up to 131,000 in uh, doing that. So, boosted us up a little bit, nothing too out of the park I guess, but a little bit. Um, so that definitely helps, helps ensure that we make it through to, uh, when we can sell our crops. <clears throat> we are going to have to fill up with seed here fairly soon. I don't think that we're going to have enough to finish this field. Uh, it's going to be close, but I don't think that we will have enough. Um, Yeah, we're in a high seed usage area as well, so. I don't think that's going to happen, but we uh, we will see. So, I am recording this on Friday. Uh, actually, here in about a half hour from me recording this is when Friday's video goes live and uh, you guys are seeing this on Saturday uh, once I finish recording this I'm actually gonna be doing a live stream on this map doing some off-camera work uh, and my plan is I'm going to mostly finish up seeding uh, just because it's a lot of the same thing over and over. I don't want to make five videos just of seeding. Um, so, and I haven't done a live stream in a hot minute. So, figured we'll do that doing some off-camera work. And, uh, so, to anybody that is watching this that stopped in for the live stream... Thank you. Uh, hopefully, can get some good viewing in on it and whatnot. But I am going to do that right after this video. So, um, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finishing up our oats. And then our next crop is going to be our sorghum. I did update our work plan for the alfalfa. Um, we need to roll that yet. So the plan is we'll finish up the oats. We will wash the tractor and drill up. And then we're going to get hooked on to our international planner. And get um, rolling on sunflowers. And then we're going to hook our big Steiger up to the land roller. Get these fields rolled before I fast forward to the next month. And then uh, we'll be ready to keep on rocking. I am probably going to save our last field. Um, 
do, 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 do. I'm probably going to save either the corn or the sorghum field for next episode. And then we'll finish it off and uh, get moved up to another growth period, I guess. Uh, probably to whenever we can start cutting our hay. That's kind of my plan anyways. Yeah, I'm thinking another round or two and we're going to have to fill up. We are down to 7% now. And it's not like we aren't going to need this thing filled up with seed. Because um, it's still going to have to plant our soybeans. So And I know I'm sure some people are going to say, Oh, you're planting soybeans with a drill. Why? Um, that's how we do it at work. We use our air seeder to plant our soybeans and then we use our corn planter for putting in soybeans and or not soybeans sunflowers um, like for example this year we had winter wheat spring wheat corn sunflowers and soybeans obviously winter wheat was already put in last fall um, but we use the drill for our spring wheat and our soybeans, and then we used our planter for our corn and our sunflowers. Uh, I believe last year uh, they used the air seeder for some sunflowers and just pinned up one of the shanks on the toolbar for the drill. Um, I wasn't around for planting last spring so I'm not too sure how it all went or anything like that but um, I do know I do remember my boss telling me that they had seeded some with the drill mainly I think he wanted just to try it out uh, last year and see I know we were going to try some of the soybeans with our corn planter but uh just didn't work out that way and then we got to the point where it just wasn't worth taking the time to switch everything over on the corn planter and getting it set up to do soybeans and we already had enough spraying that needed to be done this summer that they didn't want to add extra times of going to those fields it would have been different uh, if the soybeans had been a little bit closer to home whereas they were like 80 to 100 miles away from home so um, I would say about 80 90 maybe at the most but so we just didn't get around to it and I don't think that we're going to do it this year either uh, or this coming up spring I know I will be putting the corn and sunflowers in next spring that's not even the truck I was standing next to why are you trying to enter that truck there we go um, so that'll be fun I got a lot of work to do on the corn planter this winter uh, I know that much for sure. There's, well, last winter we put all new, we put a brand new fertilizer system on. Um, we use dry fertilizer. We don't use liquid, so. Um, a few years ago when they got this planter, they had put on John Deere's fertilizer system. And the problem with it was, it was so hard, um, and it had zero give to it, 
So when you came to just about any kind of rock, you would have to lift up even little ones. Or it would bend the ever-living crap out of everything. Um, and they said it was just a nightmare. Last, or was it this, early this year, I believe in January, they went to a farm show. Um, and they found a Martin Till brand uh, fertilizer system that we installed on the planter and it was a little bit of a nicer setup and then we put all brand new hoses on because the old hoses were just so rock hard and brittle they just they needed to go and so we put that on we replaced all the seed discs all new gauge wheels and I mean I think this planter was our project for like two weeks um, and not sure what the issue was that was causing this to happen, but this spring during seeding, um, there are two bolts that hold the fertilizer disc in place because you can adjust it to different depths. And so we had ours set right where we wanted it. But it just, it didn't, I don't know. I wasn't around it a whole lot this spring, but it constantly had problems with breaking those bolts that held it in place. And we aren't sure why, but it was. And when it would break, the fertilizer wheel would, or the disc would kick back and it would actually rip into the gauge wheel. So all of the brand new ones that uh, me and a guy that used to work with us put on last winter, I have to go through and replace every single one of them again this winter. So that's going to be a fun project. And I know my boss has talked about buying a fertilizer spreader. And so we're not... I don't know for sure if that's the plan, but if it is, then we're going to pull all the fertilizer stuff off, unhook our Montag that we pull behind it, and then it's just the planter that we got to worry about. But if he doesn't, then I think the plan is to actually weld all of those fertilizer units solid and eliminate the bolts completely because we have it set where we need it, so we don't have to adjust it and so we're just gonna say screw it and weld it in place and be done with it um, or because it's either that or we uh, drill the holes out and use a bigger and stronger bolt but we don't really want to have to do that so, I think that is our plan of just using the welder and weld everything solid. And I know I got a lot of a lot of things that I'm gonna have to work on this winter. We have we've had a lot of breakdowns towards the end of harvest. So we were all very very happy when that last. 12 rows of corn was uh, going through the combine. But the nice part is my boss actually put up a building at his house and because he lives just outside of town uh, where in the town where I live and then the farm is about an hour drive from my house. So it'll be nice. I won't have to drive an hour every morning. I can just drive. It's like 15 minutes from my house over to his. And he put up a nice 80 by 120 building. Um, super nice. And 
So the plan is that's where we're going to work out of. And then we're also going to be able to pull trucks in there and park those at night when we're hauling. And then uh, he put floor heat, <clears throat> excuse me, floor heat in the building. So that'll be nice because then at night, while the trucks are sitting, then all of the snow and whatever from the day can all melt off and dry up on the ground and we don't have to worry about frozen brakes or if a truck has to be plugged in you know oh did we plug it in did we forget did something short out anything like that trucks will start every time all that fun stuff and it'll be nice um I think actually we're going to be setting that up next week sometime, uh, potentially. I know we have, we're going to be sorting calves off on Tuesday uh, for the sale on Wednesday. And then I believe Thursday we have the vet coming to uh, PG our cows. And then we can get that done out of the way. And... Uh, we're going to be working on setting up the shop. So it's going to be a busy week. Monday we're going to go haul some corn again for a friend of my boss's. Get uh, a few more loads out of there for him. And get that done. And then uh, I know we have a truck that needs to get dropped off. And get some work done to it. Um, you know, oil change and few other things and then uh, some other stuff because since the shop isn't set up yet I can't really work on anything yet otherwise I'd just do the oil change myself and the other work but all right let's get this stuff updated this field is done so we're going to take this back to the yard and we are going to wash these up and then pull this drill up out of the way and get it unhooked. And we're going to get hooked up to our international corn planter and we're going to go get some sunflowers put in. I got to look at uh, what field are those going in again. 130. So that is going to be that field right there on the other side of our alfalfa. Not sure what's going on in that field there. It's like some bushes and stuff in the field. and Not too sure. I know DR does still have a few bugs that uh, he's got to work out on this map from... Uh, what I've read in the Discord. But, of course, no map is perfect right at the beginning. Anybody that tells you that is 110% lying to you. Some of the fields on here, though, are just massive. It's kind of nice. we got a wide variety in field sizes here. Like this one, this is just huge. It goes on forever, it seems. Definitely not a field that we're going to use this machinery on. Uh, we would be there forever. So our fertilizer spreader definitely is not accurate at all. We're already at 61.9 acres just between two of our fields. So that right there can tell you that uh, that, dr that fertilizer spreader does not give us quite an accurate reading of uh, what we did. That's why I like going over it with the planters afterwards because they are a lot more accurate. Okay, drills washed up. Let's get this tractor cleaned up a little bit quick. 
And then we'll uh, hook onto the planter and get moving on some sunflowers. We'll probably get that field started. And uh, then that'll probably be it for today. And the rest of it will be live streamed up until when we get to our soybeans. And we're going to go ahead, get this switched over to soybeans right away. So that way it is ready to rock and roll. We're just going to pull this right up here and drop it. And it's out in the open, but it's out of our way. We're going to come in here and grab this guy. We need to set it to sunflowers. And then we are going to pull it out here in the middle of the yard, get it unfolded, and we're going to get things filled up. Uh, and this thing does not have a cover, so got to kind of just guess of where it's going to be at. I'm assuming if I put the spout over top of the box, it might... Fill it. There we go. Perfect. So then while that's going, we can grab this guy. And we'll get it backed up to the planter. And we'll get him filled up with liquid fertilizer. We got the pump on on the truck. Oops. Now let's see here. Can we get it to fill? There we go. This got to be closer. So we are down to 31% in this guy. So I have a feeling that we'll have to go and get probably one more load before everything is said and done. Alright, we are about half full on this truck yet. Which, this is fine, we have tanks in the yard of this, so that I'm not as worried about. Okay, we can fold this guy up. So we have 1,056 gallons of fertilizer and what is that, 31.1 31, 31 .1 bushels of seed. So not a super large capacity for seed on this thing, but I think we should be pretty okay. Should last us a little ways at least. So we'll just jump down here onto this section line and go on over to our field here. So I think I'm just going to plant directly over the waterways. Rather than going around them and spending the extra time. Mainly this one right here. I think this, yeah, portion of this is actually just grass over top of the field, so... This little girl is not quite happy. Yeah, you can see it just kind of got rid of the grass there, so. Come on. You got this. It's not even that much of an incline, so I don't know why it's struggling so bad. I'm not sure if it's... I don't think that's base game. 
I think it's one of the uh, one of the mods I have that's supposed to make equipment a little more realistic and it's nice but it's sometimes a little too much and now the tractor doesn't even want to turn so we're gonna just pick it up and turn try and get a little straighter here I don't know if it's I think it's the engine dynamics or whatever it's called not 100% sure, but I gotta figure it out and get rid of it, because it's kind of annoying. Like, this tractor has plenty of power to pull this corn planter. And it just won't. I don't know if I need more weights on the front. Let's try that once. Customize. Do, 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 do. Let's put 11,000 pounds on there. It seems to turn a little bit better. It is still just struggling, though. And I don't understand why. Why it's having this much of a problem. If need be, we'll go pull the big Steiger out, hook it up to this thing, I don't know. I'm not sure what else we can do here. I just know it's going to be a long couple of headland passes at this rate. Now this one, we're just going to cut across this one as well. Man, I just don't get this. Because if we look here, planters, 120 horse. And this tractor is 162. So it should have no problems pulling this. It's got the horsepower for it. And see, like now it's doing fine. I'm just kind of at a loss here of what its deal is. Okay, well, I think I'm going gonna figure this out off camera and see what the problem is here. See if I can't get this to work a little better because uh, this is going to drive me insane so I'm going to see what I can do here but uh, until then uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and like I said I'm going to stream some off camera work and so when we come back for the next episode we will be finishing up our planting and getting ready to move on to other things so hope everybody enjoyed this if you did be sure to hit that thumbs up button and uh, if you're new to the channel welcome to the channel be sure to subscribe if you like what you see thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you all next time